now inviting Kostudi, Lara, Ratnadi, uh, and Rahul to join me on stage. I feel so humbled and really a misfit in this beautiful um, panel. The topic is diversity and possibility, Odyssey today. When you look at scholarship and how it grows, my scholarship comes from many years back. I'm 74 years old, right? And um, scholarship has grown in depth. So therefore, I would like younger people to come with scholarship that um, situates policy in world dance, rather than in just you know, in India and within Indian classical framework. That's one of the reasons I would like you three to start. So, Odyssey today, diversity and possibility, I would request Rahul Acharya to start the panel discussion. Thank you, Kostavi. Uh, it's a great honor, thank you, Shamari Bhai, to have invited me in the panel. Uh, well, what do I say? It's open to question and answer, but just a very basic remark. I see more interest in the people sitting in the panel rather than the people sitting in the audience. It very well shows how much we Odyssey dancers are interested in the academia of dance. It, it feels like there are more people on stage than the number of people in the audience, and which Shamari Bhai has already taken the pain to let everyone know that this is going to be an interactive session, please do come, and then we see the turnout. So, uh, what more to say? This shows how interested people are in discussing or understanding the nuances of the dance. It's just becoming robotic. It's just the dance, pick up a couple of items, perform, that's all. No one wants to get deep into that. So, I think we should start with that. Um, I request Sonali Appa. Thank you, Rosalie, and thank you, Shabri Bhai, for inviting me to be a part of this panel. And I'm very fortunate and to be a part of this, and I'm happy that the panel represents people from such a diverse, uh, from such different diverse, from such diverse viewpoints as dancers and scholars and artists. I will uh, dovetail off what Rahul is saying to point out that in the world we come across these seismic shifts which all of a sudden shape the views or perceptions of culture. It shapes us moving forward. And I think uh, in the last decade or so we've seen changes in technology, changes uh, you know, having internet, having television, having social media, the Me Too movement. And so with all of these things that have been happening over the past decade, those these massive shifts in how we think and how we interact and how we how we access uh, you know information, how we share information. Uh, it's it's not just something that affects the dance world. It affects you know many many different parts of our lives. Now, as dancers, what is, what are the implications for us now in terms of how dance is presented, in terms of how it's taught? You know, different uh, debates have been emerging as a result and. As Rahul is saying, it, it is very important that scholarship and discussion and you know seminars you know, bring about the you know these types of dialogues. And it's sad to say that you know the, the turnout is so low. And as Odyssey dancers, especially, scholarship has always remained sort of on the bottom of the totem pole. And this is a problem, I feel personally as a dancer, because I have experienced this. I think my um, being American, but being of from Odia family and having grown up in America and educating, but having trained in Odisha and then ultimately settling in Odisha, it allows me at least the uh, the ability to always see things in two perspectives. And as a dancer who travels also, I understand now how these changes, these global changes, are really putting to to test, you know, or to question, I should say, uh, the the present situation of Odyssey and, and what are we, what should we be doing moving forward? And um, I hope that, you know, we can, we can have more discussions on that. Sorry, I took more time. I think, you know, both, uh, I, I wish uh, Rahul and Lara to speak a little bit uh, elaborately. Odyssey was never one voice from day one. Uh, when Odyssey came into being, it was never a 
uh, it was never one voice. It was multiple voices, diverse opinions, diverse viewpoints, and that's why, at least in the initial stage, we got uh, uh, three major style led by three major groups. Uh, many there are many uh, opinions that people say that okay, what is the uh, differences? Actually? What are the differences? It's all the same. But you know, from the day one, if you see. Uh, if you go through the documents of Jayantika, and again there is a, a, a very significant uh, seminar in 1976, uh, where all the gurus and dancers they came together, and there was a uh, there was a three days uh, journey. Uh, what should be the future of Odissi dance, and what should be the drama, what should be the uh, uh, reporter, and there are many opinions. Kiru Babu never agrees with. Uh, Babu hardly agreed with the Debabu. So there was a democratic dialogue. There was democratically uh, different opinions uh, from day one. So that's why Odissi is not an uh, arbitrary dance form. Rather, I always believe that Odissi is a democratic dance form. So we have to accept somewhere that uh, Odyssey is, uh, you know, when we talk about or uh, when we jump into the debate of a uh, tradition versus modernity, experiment and other things, you know, all of a sudden we become very, uh, a kind of uh, uh, cultural police. Uh, we want to uh, uh, dominate a given, uh, we want to say that, no, 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 this is, the, this is the only form or this is the only way to go uh, for Odyssey. But uh, there are many, uh, there are diversities and possibilities, if I say, in Odyssey. Today, what Odyssey is, uh, uh, the way Odyssey is going now, it's going uh, much ahead of any other dance forms. Like, you know, there are very little experiment in other dance forms. So whatever I see, uh, suppose you say, you take Bharatanatyam or uh, Kathakali or Satriya, uh, there is still a uh, confusion whether we should experiment uh, thematically, whether we should uh, uh, experiment uh, stylistically or whether we should deviate a little bit from uh, the well-set drama, there is still a confusion. But Odyssey in that way, very fortunate that it has opened up its, uh, uh, its fold and very, uh, uh, you can see great themes coming up. Uh, but uh, if you look into the new choreographies of Ratikant Mahapatra, Runa Mahanti, uh, Ramli Ibrahim, Meera Das, uh, Ratnadi, and many more. You, you name anyone. Everybody is doing their beat and they are trying to push the boundary a little bit further. I really appreciate what Kirama said. It's, it's very important that young people come forward. You know, um, I'll just give you a very brief history. When I had started learning dance, um, Jayantika had just started working on things. And I was, this is 1973, and I came here to work on dance. And um, I wrote to three gurus, and Guru Pankajan Das immediately responded. And so I didn't know the difference. I said, all right, then you are my guru. Uh, later on, I was asked to abandon him. I said, no, I don't abandon anybody. I don't abandon my children, and I don't abandon my guru. So, I'm just giving you a little nutshell of my history there. Then Pratima Bedi came to the United States and said to me that we have found out that you are the only one that has not studied under Guru Kilichar Mahapatra at that time. Right? And so she said, you have to promise me not to study. I said, you know, you study. Everybody studies under everybody and picks up things. At that time, you know, you're talking about the early 1980s at this time, right? She said, no. I came all the way from India to the United States, Western United States, to ask you, please, to listen to me. And I did. And without that, I could not have revived Guru Bhagavatam Das's dances. I, and so, if you're looking at it as a scholarly thing, you know, I would have given anything to have learned from all three gurus. Because I would have had an immense, rich 
learning process. I'm just throwing things out. You have to put them all together to figure out what the answer is. I was in the dance department at the Evergreen State College in 1989. That's when I went into the dance department. And I ended up being the chair of the dance department with ballet and modern under me. And ODC had doubled the funding of ballet and doubled the funding of modern. 1989. Why? When I went to them and I said I need money, they said to me, dance doesn't get money, you get $50. I said, fine. I hand wrote posters and put it up everywhere around the world will be dancing a soul. All the monies will go into ODC. $1,500 was raised in one night and it became ODC budget. I have retired, there's still $10,000 there in the ODC budget. 3,000 in ballet and zero in dance, modern dance. Now, what I'm trying to say to you is I'm not a pioneer or anything. I'm just giving you some historical background. They are amazing scholars thinking of the present. I'm just giving the historical background to lay the foundation on how to build from there. Now, you cannot go back to the 1970s and 1980s. What we have to do is go forward from there and figure out. There was a time when I came here, Rahul was a young boy. And I, he was really young. He would sit there at 9 o'clock at night. I used to live close to where Guru Kalishan Mahapatra's you know, house is. And I would say, Rahul, you have to go home. No, I can sit here. I said, Rahul, it's 10 p.m. And drive him out. I loved him. There was so much enthusiasm in him, and now I'm seeing that he's not just a dancer but a scholar. You have to be that. You can't separate those two. You know what I'm saying? You can't go forward or you'll just be regurgitating old thoughts. That doesn't mean that the old thoughts are wrong. It means it's historically important that you embody the old. But it's also historically important that you voice the new. When you're talking about uh, new uh, generation, new choreography, and you are talking about uh, uh, social justice and dance and other things, we are talking about uh, inclusivism. And uh, are we, you know, in a, in, in, in a very age-old classical format where exclusivity is the uh, dominating term, how can we create an inclusive dance, an inclusive classical dance form? Is it really possible? If possible, how it is? But first I will try to uh, quote what our other panelists have said, including you. Um, on the idea of exclusivity and inclusivity, I think Rahul raises a very important point of consumerism, how the items have become consumable products and how we are able to, with um, resources, be it money, be it time, we are able to consume them. So, going on that, I think Ratna Roy's urgent clarion call of embody the old but voice the new becomes really important where it's not just consuming but really going deep and dance and dance and scholarship needs to go hand in hand at the same time. Lada Appa Sanali Mishra raises a very important point in terms of seismic shifts existing in the field. So the last 10 years has seen indeed seismic shifts in terms of technology, internet, social media is such an important role. So it is, um, it is not unheard of how dance training has changed as well, where dance training becomes a consumable product as well. You are talking about the good uh, stuff of technology, but there is always the bad side. The dilution of the form starts there when you start emulating videos visually from YouTube or Vimeo and you're trying to learn items, quote-unquote items. Um, 
But then coming together by his question and rather challenge to youngsters, quoting Nijinsky as, as an innovative choreographer, I, I wonder, I wonder when, when should, when should we know people, people like, um, people like me, and I don't even compare myself to others sitting here, I mean, I'm really, really a dot or even smaller than that in the, in the ocean of Odyssey, which is so vast, it's, it's indeed infinite, the depth is infinite, and the depth that I can uh, learn from my, my gurus, Srijan, Guru Radhika Mahabhatra Guru, Sujata Appa, um, Guru Posha Dimpuji, the that depth itself is infinite. So it's really hard to at some point draw the boundary to know, oh now I know enough, oh now I can create. So I faced that dilemma around um, when I was in mid-twenties, it's been ten years now already. So at that time, I took to scholarship and thinking about Ratna Roy as well as Rahul's comment on how the two have been parsed out. Odyssey is an incredibly, incredibly rich scholarly discipline, but the two has been have been parsed out over the years, and it has become a studio commodity. It is impossible to get that sort of immersive learning in the one hour or two hours of studio training that one can have. So it is indeed important that one goes through that immersive learning, stays at the Guru's place and learns. That is part of it. But at the same time in today's world, I feel that challenges are worth and it is important that we tackle them head on. Then finally coming to social justice, I think classicism in general is indeed a very utopian framework and utopia we know from history is not um, politically, socially, culturally um, possible. So, but nevertheless, there are various ways of navigation. It is not a direct communication. So there are so, there's already a lot of richness within the Sanskrit literature, within the, the existing philosophy that we um, apply in dance. We are almost learning applied philosophy in the Odyssey technique or Odyssey choreography. But if we are able to go deeper into it, we may find and we will find because classical arts do persist. They persist for a reason. They persist for their, um, their appeal. Their appeal to old as well as the new. So I think social justice is imperative at this current moment when the world is burning. It is really, really important to deal with it when Me Too movements are coming up. It is important to think about environmental justice when world leaders refuse to look at existing data. So social justice is important as an issue, but it doesn't need to be at the cost of dilution of form. And towards that, I think I want to ask Rahul, because Rahul, um, I've heard him talk about uh, the Uriya-ness of Odysseys. So if, you, if you please elaborate a little more on that. 